so we're in the shop now this is the car in question and uh, it's running a V6 Commodore engine of some sort and uh, not a bad little project car he's actually uh, in the process of mounting a turbo in the boot it's a bit different the uh, ECU currently sitting in the footwell here and uh, as I mentioned before there's the separate igniter box which uh, uh, they separated because they couldn't get rid of interference um, uh, upsetting the main uh, main computer there so so anyway up under the dash here is a, uh, a relay that operates the fuel pump and that's what we're expecting to hear click when we turn the key so give it a shot. So I don't know how well, I don't think you'll hear this at all, but we'll flick it on. And the relay's on. And it's off. Excellent. Alright, we're going to give it a kick and see what happens. Moment of truth. Wow, this doesn't look too good, does it? Now, this has been a real roller coaster of a thing. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been one problem after another. So, uh, in the first video, of course, we um, we we fixed the problem with the fuel pump relay not being activated, and um, that was uh, uh, due to the transistor that sits in here. Um, it uh, it was damaged. Um, we replaced it, uh, chucked it back in the car, and um, um, we yeah it, it worked briefly um, and failed again. Um, and uh, uh, it was most odd. Uh, we thought um, and we replaced it a second time, um, and it failed again. Um, and now if we backtrack slightly uh, before that, after the first replacement was working, um, we, uh, we identified that um, while cranking the engine over that there was no crank signal coming off the pickup. Um, and uh, we proved that by uh, um, uh, taking the signal line um, out of this, which is a 5 volt line that gets pulled to ground. Uh, to create the signal, and um, and by tapping the five volt that that signal line on ground to mimic the pickup um, on the crank, uh, it activated and uh, and the and the, the fuel pump turned on and we were getting um, uh, injector pulses and whatnot. Um, so so yeah, so we ordered another crank sensor, um, popped it on, and uh, it. Um, Attempted to fire and cough and and, and fart and um, it didn't go any further. Um, it wouldn't start. Uh, eventually, blowing the um, relay drive transistor again. Um, so uh, what I did um, after that um, is I've I put in a bigger one. I thought oh, I'll just beef it up. You know, maybe there's some anomaly that. Uh, uh, the little little one that we were using, which was rated at uh, 600 milliamps, um, uh, wasn't happy with. So I've, I bumped it up to this, which which will support one and a half amps, and uh, just just wired it over to the um, board. Um, and that's working, been working fine. Um, um, so we identified that only one uh, row of injectors was um, firing. Um, so when I looked into it a bit further, I uh, found that um, um, these two these two diodes here um, are the um, back EMF suppression diodes. So these two diodes here um, suppress the um, flyback off the injector um, coils, and uh, this diode here was in the wrong way around. And what that meant was, there's, uh, there's these two FETs, one here, one here. They um, 
they pulse, in this case being a V6, three injectors each is the way it's staged. And, uh, and what was happening is um, when this one would turn on, it would fire three injectors. And when this one would turn on, because of that diode being in reverse, um, it would fire all six injectors at the same time. And, um, and also because this diode was reversed, there was no back EMF suppression um, from all six of those injectors. And uh, I believe I'm quite right in that the, um, the high voltage kickback was um, going straight into the power line. And uh, what it actually did is it, it, it kept destroying this transistor for a start. Um, it also destroyed this IC here. And uh, what that IC does is actually it lives right here. And uh, it takes the signals from the micro in one side and it spits out um, a gate drive pulse for the FETs. It's actually a, um, a FET driver IC is, is dedicated as, and uh, um, so anyway, we found that it was only firing one uh, one of the FETs. There was um, no pulse coming out the other side for the other FET, um, and uh, uh, yeah, um, that's why it was only firing one row of FETs, but that's, that's what would have killed everything to start with, was this diode being in backwards. Now, um, uh, being able to obtain that IC is a little bit of a challenge. So, so what I've actually done here is I've um, got a couple of uh, NPN transistors and, uh, and a couple of resistors there. And, uh, and uh, when the, um, the FETs are turned off, um, the micro is putting out a high signal and to turn them on, <clears throat> it goes it goes low so what I've done is I've got there's the original uh, resistors that the um, signal passes through to the gate um, I have taken a couple of uh, resistors and gone from uh, each one of those lines over to uh, the positive rail so that's that's pulling the gate on uh, when the transistors are off and when the, when the uh, signal goes high from the micro it turns the transistor on, which um, which drives the uh, the gate line to ground, um, and turns it off. And uh, that seems to be working quite well. There's of course one for each FET. Um, here I have used uh, 1k ohm resistors, uh, and uh, these original ones are 22 ohm. So um, so that seems to be working quite well. Uh, of course, in the original IC, uh, it had a, uh, a an op amp, which um, I, I think is just for making a very stable voltage reference uh, for the logic gates, which are in there. Uh, the signal would come in through a um, uh, what looked like a Schmidt buff buffer, and uh, and into uh, uh, an AND gate that had a um, a couple of outputs. One was a not output, inverted output, um, and uh, and there were um, a couple of transistors um, each way um, on the end of that to either drive the gate high or low. So um, so anyway, uh, we got that running, um, and now we're finding that both of these FETs are being driven at the same time. So all the injectors are firing at the same time. Um, I, I don't, it's, it's certainly um, the micro that is driving it. It's not one of these turning on and turning both on like I, I, I thought maybe I'd done something wrong there. And every time one of these turned on, it fired both of them anyway. Um, but I am, I put the scope on the signal lines from the micro and uh, it's definitely sending both at the same time. Um, so I think that's a programming issue um, and something we need to look at in the tuning software. Uh, putting this unit back on the car, um, now that I've done this, we spent some time with it. It was working better. It was certainly trying to start um, and firing, uh, uh, sounding a lot more promising. Um, <clears throat> we uh, uh, played with some of the settings as far as crank um, timing um, and, and such, and we're only talking milliseconds, sort of 10 to 20 um, here or there. 
um, and not really getting getting some change but not much um, and uh, so we looked at the engine a bit closer and uh, found uh, after sort of studying which exhaust pipes were getting hot to indicate which ones were firing which ones weren't firing and then looking at the firing order we found out that um, it's got three coil packs which are waste sparks so um, so it fires one pack will fire two plugs and only of course one of them will matter because it's in the, in the compression stroke um, and we found two of them were uh, the wiring was wrong so the, at least that part of the wiring loom was set up wrong um, so we have since swapped the ignition leads over and it it almost starts it's it's so close and um, but what we're finding now is after a while of cranking the injector pulses just disappear completely it is really bizarre so there are still more faults with this and the injector pulses are um, they are being stopped by the micro again I did test that it's not it's not that this little circuit I've made is, is getting stressed and um, failing there's definitely no drive coming through to these under that condition and um, it does I did notice it's a time thing um, I could turn it on now and uh, it, it would um, pulse the injectors um, for some time and then eventually stop if I was then to um, power off and power on and try again it would work but for a much shorter time so if something uh, something something's failing after a while so my next course of action is to check the uh, 5 volt regulator um, there's bound to be something else in here that's been damaged by the high voltage spike and um, I don't believe it's the microprocessor yet I'm going to try and rule out everything else first <laughs> and um, but I think the micro is okay um, so I need to check the voltage regulator if it's if it's been damaged it may not be able to sustain 5 volts for some time we also noticed that while cranking um, while the crank signal is constantly present and, and and it is getting all the way to the micro uh, it was shutting off the fuel pump relay after a while about the same time as the injector pulses start to fail as well so I am starting to wonder if um, if something's causing loss of voltage uh, I see I see a couple of tantalums um, I will need to check those I think they are known to uh, fail as well uh, it could be possible that one of them is starting to pull down the line over time as things warm up or something um, yeah it's just it's just interesting that it's it's definitely time variant uh, so next step is to hook up some uh, some uh, uh, meter to the 5 volt line and uh, see what happens under those failing conditions okay so the setup I'm using here um, we've got the relay which uh, would be the fuel pump relay and I've just hooked that up so I can hear it switch and I know that the things um, uh, effectively uh, running and uh, I've got here I've got the signal for the uh, crank position sensor um, this is my negative so I'm just tapping that to create a low pulse and you probably just heard it there and then you can see the uh, light for the injector the injector there you go I've got I've got a light test light here hooked up and that flashes that would be the injector switching on so um, and I've also got the scope on the 5 volt regulator and uh, that's that that's that right there I mean it's a little bit warm but it's not overly warm it's overall is drawing 170 milliamps which uh, I wouldn't think as much that figure doesn't really change either when it's functioning um, but uh, we do need to start monitoring things like that because um, somewhere along the way something's giving up and uh, that's causing our non-start I think so uh, if I uh, tap this on here you'll see the the light flash and uh, I just keep doing that for a while keeping an eye on things and eventually that will stop flashing and it's done it now and our voltage is uh, still at 5 volts if I take stop the relay goes off if I start again the relay will click on and we'll get some more flash and 
it faster and faster to mimic a faster engine speed, but then as you can see, it's gone off there. Um, right, what I've done here, and uh, I've been playing with this for some time, trying to get the, the pulse widths um, somewhere reasonable, and not telling the thing that it's doing 30,000 RPM, so that was a bit of an, uh, a bit of an oops in my calculations, but... Uh, what I've done is I've set up over here um, my Arduino. It's running a pulse out to um, this little transistor. You can ignore the rest of this circuit. This is something else. I'm just using the breadboard again. Uh, um, so yeah, it's switching this transistor um, off and on to mimic the uh, uh, crank angle sensor pulse. And uh, as you can see, or maybe not see, the light is flashing, uh, um, if I'm correct, it's currently um, making a signal um, that suggests about a thousand RPM run speed. Now I know it doesn't have the throttle position sensor signal, so it, it probably doesn't know where the hell it, sh it should be in the map, and it doesn't have the uh, the um, pressure sensor hooked up either so it can't determine vacuum um, but I just wanted to try and get some consistency out of this and uh, it has been running um, for a bit now without uh, stalling um, or shutting off the fuel relay and just, just shutting off the in, uh, injectors altogether um, if I hit reset there's a few seconds the relay turns off there's a, there's a nice delay to let it think it's not cranking it flicks back into crank and we've got well it's going to be stupid again not do it <laughs> it was doing it it was um it was pulsing once every once or twice a second it was about i set it to about 200 rpm or 250 rpm crank speed signal uh yeah it keeps dropping but that was the point of changeover I think in the in the uh, signal so I mean there's still some unknowns I'm gonna have to get this thing on the car and, and do some more scope work with it actually on the car and um, yeah it's it's still being difficult hmm. so now I'm just gonna see if it'll crank for um, a hundred seconds continuous. So there we are. That's okay. Um, I did have it, of course, powered off for a bit just then, and that did seem to make a difference. There, it's just gone just then. It's still running in crank. So, yeah, we'll have to get this on the car and. Uh, hope the other sensors are good and uh, scope the crank angle sensor uh, which is something I didn't get to do last time and um, just make sure the signals clean out of that because if that's not a good signal uh, and the rest are good then we're going to have issues um, and if uh, uh, of course if it is good signal um, I don't know I'm starting to wonder if